So the first thing that we want to look at together is the topic of the image of a linear transformation. So let me um, briefly sort of share my screen here and we can talk through uh, a little bit of what should, what should we mean by the image of a linear transformation. I'm going to keep coming back as usual to this picture, right? of what a linear transformation is, right? It's a relationship between a domain vector space and a codomain vector space. Um, and what we saw last time was that linear transformations can be represented by a standard matrix. And the way we find a standard matrix is by applying that linear transformation to each of the standard basis vectors in my domain vector space. So my standard basis vectors in two-dimensional space are 1, 0, and 0, 1. So if I set those up as my two vectors over here, so 0, 1 and 1, 0, then their images in the codomain vector space are going to be the columns of the standard matrix. So that if I, for example, wanted to have a linear transformation that sends the first standard basis vector to the vector 2, 1, and then the second standard basis vector um, gets sent to, uh, I don't know, let's say 1, comma, minus 2, then this is what my linear transformation is going to look like. This is what's going to be happening to my cat picture. Right? It looks like it's getting blown up pretty significantly, and it also looks like there's probably a reflection of some kind uh, that's happening in there. Um, and so ultimately, when I have the standard matrix for a linear transformation, I should be able to understand everything that we would ever need to know about that linear transformation. And one of the things that we'd like to know is the image of a linear transformation. An image is nothing more than a fancy word for what are all of the outputs that we get from our linear transformation. It's the same thing as the idea of range when we talk about range in a pre-calculus or a calculus class. It's everything that a function spits out actually. right? Every output that corresponds to at least one input value for our function. And so one of the ways to kind of get a feel for what the image of a linear transformation ought to be is to just kind of wiggle your domain vectors around and ask, is there anywhere that I can't get to as an output? Is there any output that I can't get from my function for some input that I put into it? And in this example, it looks like that answer is no, that our output vectors can be anything inside of the two-dimensional uh, xy plane. Um, because it looks like those are, are that's what my output vectors are able to roam in that direction. But there's a kind of a smarter way to be sure about that. And the smarter way is to remember what we said about matrix vector algebra last time. Um, when we were talking about matrix vector algebra, what we were able to say was that the way that a standard matrix works, if we know how a transformation transforms a basis, then we know how it transforms everything. And so the definition of a standard matrix is that Again, the columns are the images of the standard basis vectors. And when I multiply a matrix by a vector, what I'm doing is I'm taking a linear combination of the columns of that standard matrix. And so the vectors that are getting spit out by a linear transformation are exactly the linear combinations of the columns of that matrix. And so the question, what is the image of my linear transformation, turns out to be exactly the same thing as the question, what is the span of the column of my standard oh. matrix. So, so for this reason, sometimes the image of a linear transformation, and I'll use this term sometimes accidentally, uh, is sometimes called the column space. Column space of a linear transformation. Um, and it's called that again because the image is just the span of the columns of the standard matrix of that linear transformation. So what's good about this is that if I want to understand the image of a linear transformation and I happen to have a standard matrix for it, I'm going to fast forward here to the activity that we're going to look at together. Um, the image, again, is going to be the span of all of the vectors that are in the columns of my matrix. So in this example, if my standard matrix has this form, so the first column is 1, 0, 0, the second column is 0, 1, 0, and that's my standard matrix, then the image is going to be all linear combinations of the first column added to all linear combinations of the second column, right? all multiples of the first column added to all multiples of the second column. And so when I form that span, 
I'm going to get a times 1, 0, 0 plus b times 0, 1, 0. I'm going to get that the image of my linear transformation has the form that we find here in this number 2 option, right? a, b, 0. So it's going to be all of the vectors in the x, y plane sitting horizontally inside of x, y, z space. All the z coordinates are going to be 0, but we can get any x or y coordinate that we could ever want to get as the output from this function which we could also have understood from the original formula for this linear transformation. t of xy is xy0. So I can get any xy0 that I want to, but I can't get any vector that has a z-coordinate that's not 0 as an output from this linear transformation. Um, similarly here, if I have a linear transformation that takes xyz as an input and it spits out just xy, its standard matrix has this form, and the linear combinations of the columns of this matrix are going to be a times the first column, so A0, added to B times the second column, so 0B, added to C times the third column, which is 0, 0, which isn't actually going to give us anything new that's interesting. Um, and so the image of this linear transformation is going to be all of the vectors with an x-coordinate being whatever we want it to be and a y-coordinate being whatever we want it to be. So there the image gives me all of the xy plane. So the image is nothing more than the span of the columns. And so what I'd like for us to work on for just a, a minute here um, is if you give me a linear transformation, how do I find a basis for its image? Um, and that is nothing more than a basis for the span of its columns. And we know how to find a basis for a vector space which is already being described as the spanning set of a bunch of vectors. All we have to do is find out which ones of those vectors are independent from one another and which ones are not, which ones are redundant and then just take out the redundant ones. This is the same thing that we did back in V6, and no, V7, V7 in the previous chapter, uh, when the question was, find me a basis for the span of this bucket of vectors. And so what we did is we made those vectors the columns of a matrix. We found the reduced row echelon form of that matrix. Um, and then whichever of the columns of the RREF were pivot columns, those columns of the original matrix formed a linearly independent spanning set for the columns of the original matrix. So same kind of recipe, um, because we know that this set of the columns of this matrix are going to span the image of my set. Then the question is, if I want to find a basis, all I would need to do is find the reduced row echelon form of the matrix that has those vectors as its columns. And this would be that reduced row echelon form. The first column has a pivot in it. The second column has a pivot in it. But the third and the fourth columns don't. And so we'll take those non-pivot columns and we'll just throw them away and take just the first and second columns of the original matrix. So 3, negative 1, 2, and 4, 1, 1. Those two columns are going to be then a basis for the image of my linear transformation. So um, here's where I'd like to hand over the keys to you and your groups for 5 to 10 minutes. Um, so here's a linear transformation from 3 space into 4 space. And here is the standard matrix for that linear transformation. And so your job, I'll give 10 minutes because you actually have two things to do here. Um, one job is to find a basis for the kernel. So the homogeneous solution space, the set of all solutions to t of x is equal to the zero vector. Find a basis for the kernel. That's going to take the most work. And then also find a basis for the image. And you may be able to use some of the work that you did to find the kernel to help you shortcut some of the work that you need to do to find a basis for the image. So this is called activity 3.3.8 in the textbook right now, but in our... Um, uh, in our activity streams, it's called 3.3.14. That was last year's numbering scheme. Uh, so this is 3.3.14. If you haven't already done this with your group uh, since our last class meeting, uh, if you have, then share the wisdom with those others in your group uh, that you're working with today. Uh, everybody know who their recorders are, correct? Uh, and everyone's still here? Uh, what happened? Hold on, I need to make sure that we have everyone that we need to have. Okay. All right, I'm going to open the breakout rooms. We'll start with 10 minutes, and we'll see where that gets us. Um, so one of the nice things about finding the kernel and the image is that a lot of it requires the same work. You're going to end up um, finding the reduced row echelon form of the standard matrix of a linear transformation to discover its kernel and to discover a basis for its image. Um, and so one of the things I like about how this is Team 3's work here, um, how Team 3 did this work, is they went through the process to find a basis for the kernel by solving the homogeneous equation for these vectors. So 0 on the right-hand side, find the reduced row echelon form, 
and identify which are the pivot columns and which are the non-pivot columns. And as soon as we knew which were the pivot columns, we could look Im immediately back to the original matrix and find a basis for the image. In this case, because the pivot columns are column 1 and column 3, that means that column 1 of the original matrix and column 3 of the original matrix are a linearly independent spanning set for the, s the span of all the columns of that matrix. And so they form a basis for the image, just the first column, 1, 2, 0, negative 1, and the third column, 2, 0, 1, 1. And so immediately you have the basis, but then to find as a basis for the image. Um, then to find a basis for the kernel, we have to finish solving the homogeneous equation um, by using our non-pivot column to be one of my free variables, in this case the only one of my free variables. Um, and so setting that free variable equal to a random parameter, call it a, we can then solve for the other variables, v1 is equal to 3 times that parameter, and v3 is just plain equal to 0. And so a solution set for the homogeneous equation looks like 3a, a, 0, uh, and we could say here for any real number a. right? And so a basis for the kernel can be found just by factoring out that a to find 3, 1, 0 as a basis for the kernel. So a couple things I want to draw our attention to here, because I want to kind of draw a picture of sort of what how, how, how do I usually think about how all these different pieces fit together? 